Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to uh, the final week of Moodle MOOC 3. And uh, today is Wednesday. Hello uh, to our speaker, Eduardo. Wednesday, uh, February 26, 2014. And uh, we've got a few more presentations. Uh, there's another one uh, today in a couple of hours with uh, Charles Goodger from Italy and from the UK. And uh, there's another one by myself I'll be giving and Graham Stanley, who's going to call from uh, South America, uh, I believe Uruguay. So it uh, gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our speaker, Eduardo Lina from uh, Israel. Eduardo has been teaching uh, with technology. He's very passionate about using technology. He is an incredibly fast learner. I must confess he uh, learned Moodle very, very quickly, which is uh, the way it should be. And those of you who are trying to Moodle and are finding it difficult, it's all about relaxing and motivation. So if you want to do it, you can do it. So uh, Eduardo, you're um, invited to speak. I see uh, we just lost you. We lost your uh, webcam for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yes, it'll be coming back and forth. So if you could open it and then close it, I'll close mine so I can just get it going here and I'll take mine away. So thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us. If you could add in the chat box where you're from. Yeah, it's, it's fine now. And if you could just add in the chat box where you're from and uh, here is the link that you might want to share with your friends. It's early in the morning in some parts of the world. It's in the middle of the night in others, but I think most Europeans uh, are okay. It's seven o'clock in the morning EST time. So uh, let's get started. Thank you, Eduardo. I'm going to mute my mic. Okay, yeah. good day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I decided to close it because there's a note that says that the video might interfere. It's slow. So, yeah, so I I will, let's try this. Out. Okay. It's two o'clock in his Okay. Good day. Evening, wherever you are. I'm very happy to be here. And I'm going to be talking about using Moodle, but not just Moodle, I decided to do Google as well in a special in a special education class. So let me share with you uh, what I'm going to be showing you. And first of all, I want to thank you for being here because after all, if you are here at seven o'clock or at eight at night, thank you for your time. I've been a teacher for the last 24 years at in the same school, high school in Israel. I studied in Israel, as you see, I've been living in Israel since 1979. I was born in Argentina. So for the last 35 years, I've been here, I'm Israeli. And uh, I've been a high school teacher for most of uh, those years. Same school, a high school in Israel. And in order to show you uh, the high school, I think that it would be a good idea to share with you a video, first of all. So allow me to start by video. I'll close my microphone so that the noise does not interfere. I hope it works. I'm going to try it. This is the okay, just a moment. This is the video that I created to show you the school. So here it is. Thank you. 
יש מקום גדול, קרוגל חולון, בית ספר חלום עם המון כישרון. תנאים לומדים יודעים, על הפסקות לא מוותרים, כי רק כאן בקרוגל משלבים בין הדברים. אז תחשוב טוב מאוד איך תזכור את המקום שהיה לנו בית לכמעט חצי עשור עכשיו זו הזדמנות אחרונה להודות על תקופה כי כאן אנחנו מסיימים לוקחים איתנו לא מוותרים תקופה יפה של שנים ועכשיו Could you? A translation of this song, okay. Um, well, the song, you, you probably know it is from this singer, unfortunately, he died last year, but it, basically what the, the song says that it, it's a great place to study, <laughs> Google High School, and it goes on and on and on. Uh, the singer, not the original, the original singer, not the singer of this song, no, not the girl who sang that song in Hebrew. The one from England. I can't remember her name, but very famous. Okay, so let me tell you about Google. You may have seen uh, this movie, and anyway, I will um, give you the link later. I might, I'll put the link to the original video here. This is it. And as you could see, the school is a, a European school located in Cholon. Cholon is a city just next to Tel Aviv. And we accept students from the neighborhood where the school is located. We are not a selective school, so in our school we have everything, anything that you might want to think of. We have children from all sorts of families, different uh, incomes. Some of them are immigrants to Israel, others are Israelis who who were born in Cholon or in other cities. Uh, we have uh, all sorts of pupils, pupils who are very good students, achievers, and uh, special needs uh, pupils as well. And the classes that we integrate in our school are special education classes. So let me tell you, start by speaking about that. And I'm going to be using this slide, but I wonder whether you, is it all right? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Could you watch the film? Uh, thumbs up will show me that you are uh, there listening. Okay, thank you, Tom. So it means that if Thomas heard the everybody. Good. So the terms of special needs uh, are quite common, very easy to find. But in fact, about special need kids, we're talking about almost anybody because everybody has a special need but the ones that we have in that class in that special need class are really children who need more assistance than others and i'm not talking about mental assistance but they need a lot of the ones that we have they need a lot of um help in building up their self-image the families they come from are all sorts of families, so I'm not going to get into that background. But if there's one thing that it's in common, they need a lot of help. I'm talking about high school children, 15 year old. The ones that I'm teaching, 10th grade are 15. We have another one, another class at a higher, uh, who are. Seventeen, 
And we have another one at our team. This is a new, there's a new trend in our school to have a special education class. By law, Israel uh, gives several possibilities to these students. They may, they, they, by law, they, they have um, a right to study either it is in a separate uh, framework or in what we may call mainstream schools. Our school is mainstream and we really have taken up the challenge of uh, accepting them into our schools. Yes, they are ADHD, ADD, some of them have several. For example, some of these children find it very difficult to decode, to read. So you might say that they could be placed in any other class and given some help. But in addition to that problem, some of them may have problems remembering what they have studied. So they need reinforcement all the time. Others have a more with their self-esteem, if we can call it that way. And so they need the extra help given by the teacher, not just by the teacher, but by the school. There is a counselor that works with them. They have a tutor in their school, in their class. So at the same time, there might be three uh, teachers working with them. Sometimes in the same classroom, sometimes two are taken out of the classroom for special reinforcement or for talk, to talk to a counselor, for example. So it's, it's ongoing. They are a special education class mainly because they need that extra help that cannot be given in the framework of uh, mainstream class. Uh, is it problematic? It is not. One of the things that must be understood is that because people are special or different, they should not be put away. They should be placed in the mainstream school. They are not different. If you walk, look at these kids, if you see them, they look like any other kid. So it is not problematic. It should not be problematic. And if there is a problem, you have to turn that problem into an opportunity to make people aware that we should accept. People who are different, incidentally. Um, sometimes physical this may be problematic, not in this school, and yet we make it a point to integrate pupils with physical disabilities in our school as well, in the school system in Israel in general. So answering to as to whether it is problematic, I say no, it is not. And I wouldn't put everybody in what is called a regular class or a mainstream class, especially if kids need uh, the extra help. Talking about this, this uh, special class that I'm teaching, well, we have eight, five lessons a week, English. And this is how we have divided the class. Now, five lessons a week in the 10th grade is the standard. So they get the same amount of hours as the other kids. Just that this class, unlike the others, is made up of 15 students only. We have classes with 40, 40 pupils. If you're lucky, you have a class of 30 pupils. But usually, the number is around 30 to 40. Whereas in this class, special need class, we have 15, which is great. But remember, 15 different ways of learning. If we're talking about different uh, learning, I can't remember the name, different learning abilities. So you have in different ways, and I, as a teacher, have to try to deal with a lot of differences in the way they learn. Since it is a small class, I find it easier. But I use technology to help me do that. Some of the kids are, as I said, taken out of the class here and there to have a, a support. For example, sometimes I stay with 13 or 12 because uh, three are given reinforcement in English or in another subject at the time when I teach English. But they, the kids are in class just like all the other kids are. So. Knowing that I would deal with a special education class, I made it a point to have a two hours, two lessons in the computer lab. Now, computer lab is this place where we have some 20 um, computers and the teacher, there's a, 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 I can't, there's a, I can screen my, my 
my the screen in my computer into a, using a projector so that kids can see what I with my computer, but at the same time they can be working in the, with their computers. The point is that we have access to internet so they can be working at the same time that I'm explaining something. And I'll show you some of the things that I do, especially to reinforce their English. So two lessons are in this computer lab. One is in one classroom. And then I have another one, uh, two more lessons on Thursday, where I have a screen projector and loud, loudspeaker in a third uh, classroom. Are there any problems with behavior? Sure, there are just like with any other teenager. So we have to deal with uh, problems. Some of them are simple, others are more difficult, but we deal with that. Problems of behavior, but are not that terrible, not that disruptive. And there is one thing that should be understood when we talk about these, especially kids, I don't want to generalize, but they do not understand double meaning. You have to tell them exactly what you mean. There are no, no jokes with them. So when they misbehave, you have to tell them clearly that they are not behaving according to the rules. And you have to explain why. And sometimes explaining takes some time. It takes time out of the lesson. But that's what we have to do as educators. We are also trying to train them to, to life, not just for, to school. Now, we try to teach them responsibility. And when I say that I try to teach them that they are responsible for their work as students. I have broken, you see, they, they was, they've been studying in a traditional way up until they met me. Whether they were lucky or unlucky with that, I don't know. But they used to work with books, very easy books in English. They used to work with worksheets. And, you know, it's the usual work of filling in different words, uh, things that I find so boring that I wouldn't be able to do them. So when they met me, I told them that uh, I would work differently. Um, I, I'm reading a question. Are there any figures showing there is a difference in learning languages with technology? There must be. There must be, but I'm interested in teaching with technology, so I haven't gone into that uh, very much. Just textbooks and word, traditional word pronunciation, all that makes no sense to me, especially since I want to transfer responsibility for their learning to the kids, and I want them to learn at school. I want to give homework new meaning, and I want to make it more relevant to what they do. These books, full of rules, grammatical rules and uh, stuff like that are mostly irrelevant to to life skills. So I'm trying to use things that are more interesting and I'll show them to you uh, later. As I said, we have teamwork because I work with the homeroom special education teacher. Sometimes she it comes into the class. She's at least once a week with me in the classroom. Incidentally, she's a 26-year-old uh, teacher, new into the profession. Whereas I'm, I'm the old teacher, I'm 57. Uh, the school counselor works with me on Sundays. Uh, the school counselor is also in charge of uh, responsible for many other times. And she has uh, the time to stay with me when I'm working with the kids. And sometimes she doesn't, but I manage to be alone. I managed to work with them, and I am their English teacher. Luckily for me, and perhaps for them, I have had training as a teacher for those with special uh, disabilities, dyslexia. I'm a trained teacher in that. I've taken a two-year course at Barilan University and got this diploma. There was a time in which I was a member of the British Dyslexia Association. So I've experienced teaching kids to, to read, decoding. And some of these kids need it because some of them cannot decode, cannot read. Um, okay, technology ensures quality. Yes, I'll show you what I do with uh, technology later. So these are the things that I use. There is this very traditional elementary course book and workbook. Okay. 
traditional technology, book, workbook, pencil, notebook, blackboard, want that, believe that that is studying. So when you come up with something different, you have to convince them that that different thing is studying too. Uh, using technology to teach English is also teaching and it's also studying and testing with technology in a different way is also teaching and being tested. And even that takes time. You have to explain to the kids and sometimes to the parents and more often other teachers that you're also teaching. You're taking for granted. I don't take that the fact that kids are what they've been called digital native as proof that they have no problem with technology. They do. They have problems, they have to be taught and they have to be convinced that that is also teaching. I'll show you what I do in a few moments. Now, what are the English course's objectives? Well, the more the better. The more the better means teach them as much as possible, have them learn as much as possible, let them learn as much as they can, and um, that's great. I don't follow that rule that I talk, they listen because they can remember up to 10% of whatever I say, if at all. They read and learn is not the rule because when they manage to read, maybe they'll remember, some people say 30% of what they do. I prefer to take the other approach, have them do things, remember more. Some people say that when kids do, they uh, remember 90% of what they learn. I hope so. I hope. So there's high expectations, yes, and I make it a point to tell them that I expect a lot of them. I don't just say that I expect a lot of them. I get them, to, I get them to do things and to show me that they do these things and to show themselves that they can do these things. I want them to do more than they think that they can do. And I say that. It's not just with these kids, I usually do it with any other classes as well, but with these kids, it is very important because some of them do not believe in, and that's the problem. Now, success experiences, I don't know whether that would be the right translation, but I want them to have small successes, to experience success. The more, the better, because when they succeed, they feel better and they want to give it another try and another try and then another. We work a lot on oral proficiency. I make them talk in class. I make them talk a lot. Uh, and uh, there is something in Israel called the matriculation exam at the end of school. Sometimes it is done during high school. And I want these kids to sit the matriculation exams in English in Israel. Not all of them will be able to do them. I know that. But uh, uh, the more, the better. I want them to have a different learning experience, and I do make it a point. I make it a point of teaching them to what is termed 21st century uh, skills. I'll show you some of them. I see that as something very important. Okay. Um, are there any questions that you would like to ask? I have to look at the at the chat. I, I keep forgetting that I have to do that. Uh, how many passes a result of technology? Technology helps kids in general a lot. We special education kids. Uh, I'll have experience with that next year. Now, as for taking exams using technology, special needs pupils in Israel are tested using with a computer, for example. In English, general English I'm talking about, there are kids who find it very difficult to decode. They've, give, they've been given dispensations according to the tests that they have done. Tests carried out by a psychologist or a didactic or clinicist. Kids who have been diagnosed as having special difficulties. So up until a couple of years ago, they had to uh, sit for the exam and listen to a CD. As from last year, these exams are computer assisted. So they do the, they, they do the exam in a computer lab with technology. And the technology, the, the exams are not very different from those that can be given in Moodle, for example. 
Um, I don't have any results as to whether that is better than the, the, other, the other method, but what I know is that kids came out of that exam feeling fine. That is to say that technology problems were not something that hindered them from succeeding. They managed and they were uh, happy with that. So I hope that uh, yes, it is much better. The Ministry of Education has decided that it is after studying the subject. And I believe that they know what they have done. So I, because I'm using Moodle, with these and other kids and those who have special needs, special difficulties and will be tested with that, will find the exam very easy to handle because they will have had experience working with computer by the time computers by the time they they do that. Okay. So let me tell you what I do. We I use Moodle. As I said, this this session was going to be on how I use Moodle at Google with special education kids. But I'm going to talk to you about how I use Google as well with these kids, and you will see. Allow me to introduce you to our Moodle Moodle uh, platform at Google. It is provided by a company called Mashov. Mashov is a company that does all that deals with all our the office work and attendance and uh, information about the different kids when i finish when i teach a class i have to write what i have done i do it in that computer program so it's a computer program provided to uh, many many schools now this company has uh, given us for free the moodle service so what I get is a model platform empty, and I have to fill it in entirely because, as you see in this in this slide, uh, the model platform has blocks. Here you can see only one block, and the resource area in the middle. But I made it a point to put this photograph at the top. Now I don't have to deal with any version. We have model 2.6. The, the, the latest, a 2.5, excuse me, the 2.5, the latest. And so here is a, the classroom, here is the, the, the model that we have, the blocks, and in the middle, the resource area. The latest is 2.5, we have 2.6, we have 2.5, 2.5, okay? I guess will, we will have two point. I don't know, but once you said maybe that that was not a great idea, so I'm not very sure about what we will do. If 2.5 is better, I'll make it a point to keep that. Uh, I'll talk to the, the people. Okay. But the great thing about this is that I don't have to do any office work. I don't have to work as the administrator of the course. It is done by the computer program on its own. Kids from my class, from the special education class, when they join, uh, when they sign in to, to Moodle, they get to their own course, to their course. They cannot see what other kids are doing in other courses because it's a safe environment. It's a close environment. This, the one that you see here, is the area the, that belongs to this class. I teach Spanish and English at school. So my other students have access to their own areas, but not to this one, unless they study with me Spanish, but these kids don't. So that the environment is safe. Each teacher has screen, his own Screen place, sharing is great. His own Eduardo, site for the different sorry, courses. Screen sharing is great and because I do you're for the on six different a courses that I teach. desktop. I teach three. You're on a WizIQ desktop, Spanish, which is Spanish, great. In Spanish, three courses in English, two in Spanish, and I have another one where I train teachers in the use of Moodle. So I have access to my six courses. Other teachers have access to their own courses. Each student has access to his own course. And what I do with Moodle is what I'm going to show you now. I create for this special education class, I decided to create my own. I wonder if you can see this clearly. I understand that screen sharing may be problematic, and that's why I decided not to screen share. I'll leave that for the end. Maybe you will tell me whether it's a good idea. Or not. 
But you see, here are different uncreated model books related to the subjects that I teach in class, because what I do is blend it. Yes? Okay. Uh, I created books, for example, when at the very beginning of the year I dealt with greetings. And so they studied, kids studied everything that had to do with greetings, and of course we had some role playing class doing that. And in the books, how large are the books? I, six, seven, eight chapters, but I can always put some more. The books are these provided by Moodle. I put as much as I need. I don't think it was uh, too much on one page especially for anybody, but for these kids is problematic. Um, ah, so Justin should be way better, all right. <laughs> and, I, and I am, I am using this stuff, yes. As you see, there is a book with greetings. I'll show you what I have. But then I put some worksheets, a folder with worksheets so that kids can download them if they want at home or else have a look at them in their computer. Because again, I'm making the point that this is blended learning. I want to take as much class time as possible to talk, to, to have them do things and I want them to study at home. That doesn't mean that all of them do. That doesn't mean that all of them do all the time. But at least this gives a special meaning to homework. And there is homework. Remember that our kids I'm talking about are kids that have been given exposure to one type of uh, English work very easy and sometimes I believe boring books and these worksheets in which you have to fill in 10 words, 15 words in a sentence and sometimes the sentences are meaningless and since we, if it, some of these kids cannot decode, it means that they have not understood the page that they were given. So I have decided to teach and teach again. Some of these kids, I believe, suffer from what is called dyslexia, dyslexia or learning disabilities. The dyslexia is the teacher who taught them before. Not because it was a bad teacher, but probably because these teachers were not trained as uh, teachers for, for special need teachers in English, I'm talking about in English. So I have had to start again with many things, and I've taught the reason there are and the days of the week, as you see here, etc. Now, Moodle enables me to prepare my own stuff and to record myself or bring in recordings. And as you notice here, I prepared something about a person called Mr. Lee. That was a very easy exam. But to help those kids who could not read, I recorded. It doesn't mean that they can't read anything, but sometimes they find it very difficult to, to read. And so I recorded myself. I put stuff in different formats. You will be able to see some uh, later. The exams are also given this way. Not all the exams. What you have here is in Hebrew. It says the same as in English, online exams. As I have different levels, there are some kids who know much more English than others. I have given them the, ch the, the possibility of working at a higher level. I know that Google and Moodle allow me to have subgroups, but I decided to put everything there as show kids that, uh, they, if, that there are others who are doing uh, stuff that is more, a bit more difficult, then they can join. Here what you have is names in Hebrew of those kids whom I expected to do these exams. Uh, whatever you see in gray is because kids cannot see it now. The, the blue ones are the ones that they can see in the platform. That doesn't mean they have done this, but I don't want to have the platform overcrowded. So you notice that uh, after kids have done something, sometimes I hide it, do not delete it. I, I don't delete it, I hide it, so as not to have too much on that uh, platform. And now I come to Moodle, uh, to Google. I integrate Google with my Moodle classes. Whatever I teach using the whiteboard, I also try to teach using digital uh, tools. 
and I use Google. Google provides that I, I like to use. Mind map is one of them. And uh, here, what you see is the subject that has to do with describing a city, places in a city, because I am getting kids to work on that. So the mind map that you see here is something that they have available. I've asked all the kids to create, to have a Gmail account, a Google account, because we share a lot of things in the computer lab. I started with very, very easy things related to what we study also with the traditional book. And this is a very big, at the very beginning, I, I wrote some sentences and I asked kids to look for photographs, for picture images that matched sentences. That was easy for some, that was difficult for others. My point was to start getting kids to use uh, technology, to use Google. Some of the kids need translation. So I told them that I would not be their dictionary. I said that uh, I'm, I'm going to close my video because again, I have some something that says that my video, I'll open it later. Anyway. So I, I tell kids, use Google Translate if you need something. So, uh, and so they, they, they use that. I show them that Google Translate has the possibility of listening to what they have uh, written in English. So I get them to listen to English as well. They bring earphones, a lot of earphones. This is again Moodle. So I want to go into Google, if you don't mind. I'm going to show you what I do with Google Drive, and then I'll move back to Moodle. Tell me whether you are receiving this well, because I I cannot see. Is it all right to watch, to see the... I have, I have, okay, but is it clear or one? It is. Okay. There seems to be a problem. It does. So, Tom, I understand, can see. So. Me? Yep. The white, oh yes. Okay, I, uh, I put the one that says Google Drive and Google Plus. I wonder if people can see it. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm not going to screen share it because I know that will be a problem. Great. So, what do I do with them? I told you that I started with something easy, but that's not enough. And I've taught them how to work with certain phrases. And remember that this is not just uh, reading, this is also writing. And some of them find it very difficult to write because of problems that they have. And speaking, we make it a point to speak English in class. I get them to speak English as much as possible. And I started with something easy, a map of Israel. And I told them, pretend that you are, pretend that you are um, tour guides. And you get a group of English speakers. And you have to tell them what to see in the country. And you have to speak English. And you have to find information about the cities that you want to talk about, where they are, what you can see. For that, they must use um, it's word or phrases such as this is, it is, there is, there are. And if they talk about Tel Aviv, I try to get them to talk as much as possible as that uh, uh, as they can. What you have in this presentation is the basics. My my initial presentation, and now you will be able to see what they have been doing. I am showing you what they have done with the mistake. that they have made 
because this is still an ongoing project. I am still working with them. All of them have opened their uh, Google account. They are working each on his own presentation because they are the ones that decide where they want to take the tourists, what they want to show them, which information they want to give about the places that tourists are going to see, and they have to make it a point of using those phrases and vocabulary that they have been taught. So here's what one of these girls as a class, we correct their mistakes. You see here as well, there are some uh, mistakes, but this does not prevent the kid from explaining in English what he has decided to show the tourists. They have shared, each of them has shared the presentation with me. And I have shared it with everybody and I'll show you. It was not enough to get them to talk about Israel. I told them now, different situation, you are a tourist guide and you are taking a group of English speakers to other countries. I want you to decide which country you are taking a group to what you want to show them, but there's a certain information that you have to find out before you take them. You have to tell, find out what country it is, what you know about the country, capital city, the, age, the weather. This is vocabulary that they have been taught and hopefully, hopefully they have learned and hopefully many remember. But their decision as to where to take them, what to do, etc., was theirs. That's doing. It's a sort of a project, a small task. So this kid decided to take the people to England. What you see now is something that took some time for this student to do. Took some time because oops, took some time because. Um, we ha she had to rewrite this several times. I hope you can watch. Suddenly, it went my my screen when it came back. So England is the one that she decided to visit. You see, there's a map, etc. And the girl goes on doing this. Here's what she wrote about England. Notice the mistake incidentally when these kids are tested in English for their matriculation exam, they will not be tested in writing. Probably it will be either using the computer, computer assisted exam or else speaking and uh, projects that these are part of their matriculation exam. I'm going to make it bigger. They, they, anyway, they will be doing this in two years time. So there's a lot more to learn. Here's another student who's decided to take us to the United States again. The basic information that I wanted them to get is the same, where the country is, the flag, etc. And there's more as time goes by, goes by because this is not going to be something that they start and finish. I will get back to this uh, later. Somebody else, another kid has decided to take us to France. So I've asked him to find information about France using the internet, I did not provide anything except for that first input, the phrases that I wanted the kids to use. And the phrases that I wanted were precisely those. Uh, this is, there is, there are. You notice that they have places everywhere. Some of the kids, a few of them have already been abroad and there are those who have decided to show the country where they have been. So here's France, for example. Oh, why? It's been very slow. Paris. This is another one. It's not the same as before. This is another student who's decided to prepare something related to France as well. They are not working together at this stage, but later on, and I don't know whether in the same project or in another one, I will do something together, teamwork. I want them to learn to work in teams. Another student has decided to take us to the United States, to New York. She's been to New York. This girl cannot write, and yet she found the way to put these things in their hair 
her uh, presentation. It's a lot of work. It looks very easy. Believe me, it is not. It is not. This is the first time that these kids have done this. Now, they are not aware of the things that I still plan <laughs> them to do, but I am introducing them to Google, Google Plus, and I've created communities. I've created the Google 10th grade 8 community, just like the other one is for the Spanish uh, course that I'm teaching. And here's another one for uh, something else that I'm doing. But Google Plus enables us to share our work. And you should have seen their faces when I asked them to upload what they have done to the community class. Google Plus in this way would be something like a Facebook group, okay? We are not, I'm not using Facebook with, this, with the kids. I'm using Google Plus with them. And so in their community, they can see what other kids have done. As you notice, there's a girl who's preparing something related to Uzbekistan. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, Israelis. Nearly all of us come from uh, other countries, either because we were born in another country or because our parents were born in another country or because our grandparents were born in another country. And of course, there are many who've been, who, who's a, uh, parents, grandparents, and in Israel too. But we have here people from many, many different places. And some of them keep their traditions at home. The girl who writes about Uzbekistan is because her grandparents came from Uzbekistan many years ago. And so they keep many of their traditions. And there are Jews who came from Morocco and others who came from Argentina, like me and from Europe, and uh, people tend to keep their traditions, and, and so we learn about those countries. And I'm not surprised that kids whose uh, grandparents came from Iran, for example, prepared something about Iran, because they know a lot about that. And they will be talking about their food, etc. So what you have here, again, is what they have shared. This has to do with the Google Drive. So thank you for the part of Google Drive. I hope I'm not boring you. Let me go back to the presentation related to Moodle because I keep going back to Moodle. Is there a demand for Spanish in Israel? Of course, there is a demand for Spanish. People are crazy about Spanish in Israel. Israelis love Spanish. It started, well, Israelis have always loved Spanish, I know that, but ago, a lot of TV shows, TV programs in Spanish came, started being broadcast in, in Israel. Telenovelas, if you know what they are, Thomas, I don't know whether you watch them, but they made a lot of Israelis, and especially Israeli kids, crazy about Spanish. So they loved those programs, and they loved the language. And there was such a demand for Spanish on the part of students and pupils that uh, the Spanish department at the Ministry of Education has grown bigger and more and more teachers have been asked to join and to teach in primary schools, junior high schools and high schools. The demand was so great that a lot of kids are being tested in Spanish at the highest level possible in the framework of the Ministry of Education. And so we, I teach Spanish and the idea is that kids who finish studying Spanish in high school can manage in Spanish, and most of them really do. Because this, some, there seems to be something in Spanish that has a click in, in the mind of many Israelis. And all, yes, they love Spanish, and Israelis travel abroad a lot to South America, a lot to many countries. They start in Argentina and go up, up to Mexico, for example. And they visit different countries. Yes, they, they like Spanish very much. Okay, let me go on, because I could talk about Spanish a lot, but that's not the point, I suppose. A Moodle, Moodle again. What do I do with the Moodle books? There was a question about the Moodle books before. And here you can see what, what I do. I put, it has to be, I have to try to appeal to the different senses. Okay, I, they may not, I may not be appealing to
I know in the other we were asked to do that, but I am a little busy, not just with our days, so I, I have not been able to use it. I will, I will. Here's another example of an exam. Exams don't have to be something scary, and Moodle allows me to have this type of exam. It looks very easy. But remember, I'm talking about some kids who find it very difficult to recode, others who find it difficult to remember, others who find English very difficult, others who find English impossible. So I have to try to cater to every everybody and to get everyone do something and feel fine with it because we are trying to encourage. You see, I'm trying to encourage, but it has to be genuine. You don't have to say great, great when kids are not doing great. But the point is, if you see something and you understand it, encourage them to talk about them. If they listen and they understand, you have to encourage them to say good. When they speak, you have to encourage and you have to praise and always genuine. So what I do with Moodle is get kids to learn, to review, to practice. And I push them. We all teach. We teach our kids into into studying, don't we? So yes, I, I do a lot of pushing using a model. And uh, I I could try some screen sharing, but I think that you got the idea. And screen sharing, I know, is a little bit problematic. Ellie, so, whether or all of you tell me this has been enough. I noticed that I've been speaking for the last fifty three minutes. I can't believe it. Oh, perhaps you have uh, questions on what I have uh, done. We at Google try to help kids to, yeah, teachers have to speak. <laughs> we here at Google try, try to mm, help our students learn, do well, succeed. High school is just one more station in their life. Um, we have to try to provide as much as we can. I don't know whether school prepares kids for life. We give it a try, at least. And with special education kids integrated into the mainstream school, mainstream school, I think we at least do uh, as good as we can. Questions, comments, or any other thing that you might want me to talk about? Unfortunately, I could talk about hours, but endlessly, but it's not, not a good idea. I close my video so that you can. No, I, I haven't used Poodle yet. I, I should. I should learn that. I haven't had the time to, to learn it, unfortunately. Should I extend the class? It says whether I should extend the class. Um, I got this notice. I extended it for 10 minutes, okay? <laughs> Just in case. Do I use Poodle? No, not yet. Poodle is free. I know I should learn it. I will give it a try. I'll try. I'm waiting for some school break to be able to do that, but I am busy with other things besides school, so I have not been able to. Yeah, I know there's nothing to learn, but you need the time for that, and I should give it more time than. I'll, I'll, I will. I will use it. <laughs> yes. Any other question that I may have uh, missed? Okay, you're assuming that kids in a regular classroom are quiet. 
and you're assuming that Israeli kids are quiet. Allow me to say that Israeli kids are not quiet, generally speaking. And in, means in regular class, we have kids who have ADHD. Um, there are special needs kids in other classes as well. So I, I, I don't know. I teach, as I said, I teach classes with, in which there are 40 children and classes in which there are 20. And this one in which there are, there are, there are 15. Um, problems with noise bother because kids tend to be noisy. We try to calm them down. Sometimes they succeed, sometimes they don't. It is true that having kids who misbehave is a problem, uh, but this particular class that I teach does not have terrible behavioral problems, for example. Perhaps because kids who came to that class were, I don't know, chosen. There's a, there's a demand for this type of classes that does not, does not meet the, you have the, the rules of the, the market, right? There's more demand than places that can be allocated. Uh, so maybe the ones that were placed into this class that I teach were placed there because they do not have behavior problems or terrible behavior problems. Yes, there are kids who have uh, problems with noise, for example, uh, and uh, but that happens in every other class. So learning to behave is something that we have to work on with any any class anywhere. I do not have the experience teaching children who are not Israeli. I mean, all my experience teaching is in Israeli schools. Um, we manage to teach in spite of all the, the noise, but generally speaking, Israelis are not that quiet. We are not in Finland. <laughs> this is Israel. So I don't know whether I've answered your question. Technology helps. Technology helps, I believe, because I have, I believe that, first of all, the moment I use Moodle and I put some of these videos, they're quiet because I try to use videos that engage them, that are appealing. Music helps a lot, and I put some with music in English. I've, I've asked kids, for example, to choose a song. There is this song by a passenger uh, that kids uh, love. So I've uh, taught English using that song. And then I ask kids to choose their own YouTube videos and uh, explain why they like it. I've also asked these kids to do that in a forum, and I asked them to write. Uh, cell phones, sometimes I ask kids to use their cell phones in class, but I have a problem with cell phones. I don't like uh, the fact that kids take their cell phone and begin to send messages and do a lot of things. We could use cell phones in class. Not everybody has a cell phone. 